So congratulations on your admit to ISP. Uh, please you. uh, tell us about your uh, profile, uh, your work experience, your educational experience. Okay. So I did my BE from MSRIT Bangalore uh, in electrical and electronic engineering. And post that, I have been working in Bosch. Uh, I have experience of three and a half years. And uh, I'm working on, say, uh, in limited terms, if I could say, it's uh, creating software for us. So I work in Bosch for VW OEM and we create softwares for uh, different cars. Right. So Kushal, your work experience is, uh, you know, very close to the average work experience for a lot of schools. So out of these, how did you choose? What were the criteria that were important to you to choose uh, which schools that you wanted to apply to? So my preference was to study in India. Uh, you either um, this could be done via CAT with there are plenty of colleges but with my level of experience I thought it's better to go with GMAT I gave GMAT I had a good score and still my first preference was to study in India so with my experience and uh, the work that I had um, the only college available to me at this time was ISP okay so uh, given that uh, you were working for at least three three and a half years by the time that you started with your gmat uh, preparation how was it like you know getting started with the gmat prep and what all were the things that were really helpful or important uh, in this uh, process so uh, prior to preparing for gmat last year i had been preparing for cat i didn't do very well i had calls from a few ims but uh, again uh, couldn't convert and uh, so my next focus was to prepare for GMAT and later I thought if uh, I could, if GMAT didn't go well or something happened, then later I could check out that again. So I had good base for verbals and quants uh, because I had been preparing for CAT. So I had good practice on RCs and uh, I had been preparing critical reasoning questions as well. But uh, sentence correction is something that I had to do from scratch, maybe because that, that's not a part of bad preparation. Once also, I didn't face much issues because uh, uh, mostly all the topics were covered in CAD preparation and um, some data sufficiency questions I had practiced from official guide. Uh, coming to uh, then uh, integrated reasoning and essays, again, there's not very difficult topic. Uh, if you're coming from a science maths background, then it's, it's not very difficult. And essays, again, uh, you just need a bit of practice and uh, I think you're all set. So I didn't face much issues. And, uh, since you've written both the exams, this is also something that really bogs down a lot of people, you know. How is the CAT exam versus the GMAT exam and how is the preparation for both of these different? So uh, any, any suggestions or any inputs on that? Okay. So I feel CAT exam is a little more exhausting and needs a little more thorough preparation. Uh, for Personally, this is my opinion. It might change person to person. I believe for an average and say just above average person, even one year of prep might not be sufficient or just maybe enough sufficient to get him a okay level of college uh, with the co current competition in India. If you want to get IM, A, B, C, L, maybe sub say top IMs, uh, I've seen people give CAT once and then CAT again next year where they're all once and uh, they just keep on giving mocks and practicing and somehow uh, from what I've observed, people really doing well in second chance. There are some exceptional people who do great in the first chance itself. Scoring 99 percentile plus with, with the competition we have and uh, the seats, more seats we have, it's uh, really, really difficult. Compared to GMAT, which can be given multiple times. And uh, I believe if uh, you're good at verbal because quants is not very difficult, I think GMAT is the exam to go for. Um, Personally, yeah. So I think for me, GMAT was a little easier compared to CAT. Okay. What are the kind of triggers or what were the real, uh, you know, triggers that really brought you to uh, going in for an MBA? So, um, again, I think this would be very uh, cosmetic answer, I'd say. Um, but uh, really wanted to do an MBA, understand the business 
side of part this might come sound as cosmetic or come out as cosmetic but uh, wanted to learn more about business again this is something which i could have learned continuing with my company if i did for say six to eight more years i would have been at that stage where i understand the business part of things or the, how company is actually working when i work as a manager and leading a team but uh, somehow i wanted to say um, cover the gap in my career or say uh, a jump to my career so yeah so in terms of the uh, gmat preparation uh, when you uh, you know were there any special resources or anything that you really found useful in the preparation apart from the routine um, you know the books or the material that we face or any specific uh, resource for any topic that you could suggest i think uh, there is a really good collection of rcs available on gmat club for you to practice uh, reading comprehension, I think that's more than sufficient. And uh, official guide, uh, there are plenty of reading comprehensions. Uh, critical reasoning, again, official guide is really good. And GMAT club, you have uh, category-wise uh, classification. And uh, I think you can go for, uh, there are n number of practice questions there, there on GMAT club for critical reasoning as well. Sentence correction, I have not done from GMAT Club. I think it's more of from official guide. And there's a Manhattan uh, sentence correction book, which I refer to for uh, sentence correction. And uh, yeah, quants, again, official guide. I didn't prepare for quants much. I just uh, how to go about and maybe practice a bit data sufficiency questions, but uh, I didn't prepare for quants much. Right. So coming to the application part, you know, what are the uh, critical uh, steps in the MBA application preparation? How did you go about it? And what were the things that really mattered in a successful application? So there are plenty. I think there are a lot of components uh, to make a good profile, a good application. Uh, first is your work egg. Then uh, I think you need to have some sort of uh, a workout should stand out. I think it's it, it shouldn't be something very conventional, traditional, or uh, same. Uh, everyone is doing. It should stand out a bit. Uh, you should have good achievements over your uh, tenure of uh, work, and uh, something which shows your leadership potential or skills or something exceptional in your say technical field, if possible. And uh, coming to essays, I think essays again very important part. Uh, you need to be very thorough with your essays. They are just a portrayal of what you have done till now or uh, it's a port it's just you uh, on those two essays uh, what you have done till now what have you achieved what are your aims what are you looking for uh, everything applications i think i i was a bit late for my gmat so i finished i gave gmat uh, around july uh, last week of July, and uh, I started my application around first or second week of August. So I had around two to three weeks, which I don't think is a sufficient time, or uh, I wouldn't recommend someone starting their application two to three weeks back. Uh, uh, you will face some time constraints if you have not uh, applied to a B school before, or uh, this is the first time you're preparing an application, this thorough application for a B school. So I think you should take a month in hand before uh, this. Then you have references and other stuff which you need to compile and uh, your essays you need to work on. So I think. Uh... So uh, when, uh, what would be an ideal time for people who are looking at R1 probably next year that somehow uh, maybe happens at the end of August or uh, September, beginning of September. So what would be an ideal time to get done with the GMAT and get started with the application? I think if you're done with GMAT around May or June, even June, it's really, really good. Uh, you can take a breather for like uh, 15, 20 days and then come back with your application in July. You will have two months to prepare for the application. You can go about it easily, uh, manage with your work, uh, weekends, and I think you'll be able to finish by say mid-August somewhere where the application deadline is around August end or September first week. So I think July beginning would be a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. What about the interview uh, preparation? So interview preparation as well as the interview experience. How was how was it? So my interview preparation uh, again, I I procrastinated a bit and I postponed. Say I took it uh, to say second last week or last week of my interview prep. I had done a bit of uh, 
I was preparing for those general questions. Why MBA? Why now? Why this college and all? But I think I took it a little bit too late. I think mock interviews are really, really helpful. They help you find out the uh, uh, settings where uh, you're lagging or the gaps. Uh, and uh, I think uh, in this mock interviews are really, really important apart from what you've been preparing. And coming to the interview experience, I think it was more of a conversation sort of thing. Uh, for me, particularly, the questions were more case-based. I believe I found uh, some few, I had uh, questions for a few cases and I had to give them a particular solution. They're looking for solution. Maybe they were not exactly looking for the right answer, but how I am able to express my ideas, how I'm able to present or uh, how I'm able to get the conversation going. So... So summing it all up, what would be the tips and strategies, you know, that those are the key things. So some do's and some things you should not do when you are preparing your MBA application. Uh, some do's and some don'ts. Okay, I'll say that start early, get a good GMAT score. Again, start early for your application. Uh, be honest with your application. Don't overdo stuff. 